Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to programming Arduino Zero, MKR, or Maker 1000, or any of the SAM chips for Arduinos via the register. So that title is a mouthful. But what we're gonna talk about is for a lot of the SAM-based Arduinos, and I'm gonna use the Arduino Zero or MKR 1000 as an example, you may wanna access functionalities that you do not find in the Arduino library. And to do that, you have to access the, the registers. You have to go down to the register level to access some of the systems that, that aren't open from the Arduino. And, and some of those systems include you know, the different timers, the different clock controls, some of the more advanced power management functions, you just can't access those from the Arduino library. So here I'm gonna talk about how to do that with the, the SAM line of chips. And I'm also gonna show you the process for how to figure out what the registers do and what are the, the data structures to use to access those registers. So let's get started. Okay, here is the process we're gonna use. So we're gonna leverage the Atmel Software Framework or the ASF. So this is a huge library that Atmel made for adding abstraction to controlling their chips, making it easier. The problem is, is Arduino, and this is something I had, sort of had to figure out myself, was Arduino uses some of these data structures from the ASF, but 90 or 95% of the ASF, they don't allow you to use, or when I say they don't allow you to use, they don't have it in the Arduino IDE download but the data structures they do, and that's sometimes what they use in the libraries in their example programs. So we'll get into that. But the idea here is, unlike the AVR chips, you can't just type in the register. At least I tried that and it, and it didn't work. So you gotta use the ASF data structures. And then the process for programming one of these registers is, so how do you do it? If you wanna control, people don't just know how to do it, they don't just memorize it, the process is, and this is the process I go through, is you know, I read about the system I'm trying to control in the data sheet, and sometimes you're trying to control multiple systems. So I get an understanding of how it works from the data sheet. The data sheet will name some of the registers, what needs to be changed in the registers. I then will match those register names to the ASF documentation, and then I'll implement it in the Arduino sketch. Now, those three bullets make it sound easy, but it's a process that takes time. We'll go through a simple example here. Okay, so for our example, we're gonna change the CPU clock speed. So what's nice about these SAM chips is you can actually, via software in your sketch, change the CPU clock speed in real time. So no matter what the CPU clock speed starts out at, you can actually change it in your program. So why would you wanna do that? Well, you, you mainly wanna do it as a power management feature. So if, you're, if your CPU is just polling things and you don't have to you know, have fast reaction and you want to save power, you can actually slow down the CPU. Then let's say you need to speed up to do something fast, you can then speed the CPU back up and then slow it back down. So it's a nice feature and it makes a good uh, simple example for this video. The first step I had to do to, to do this, so I, I've never done this before. So before this putting this video together, I said, okay, so I want to do this, how do I do this? So I looked in the clock, section I also looked in the power management section and in the power management section that's where it tells you what to do and the power management section of the of the uh, data sheet I then had to go to the power management data structures in the Atmel software framework or the ASF and there's the link for it because it's actually kind of hard to uh, navigate so let's go through that process of I'll show the data sheet real quick. We won't go in great detail. I'll show the ASF, and then I'll show an example sketch where we do it. Okay, here is the data sheet, and I went to the power management block diagram. Basically, in the table of contents, I found, found the power management section. I then read through the whole section. I'm not gonna read through the whole section here. Let me just show you the block diagram real quick. Here is the, the sort of the input clock. They call it a generic clock comes into this synchronous clock controller in the power manage, management, excuse me, in the power manager. And the power manager does other things, but we're just focusing on this one thing. It then outputs some clocks, synchronous clocks, and one of them is the CPU clock that it uses to, you know, clock the CPU to execute instructions at a certain clock speed. Well, you can actually change this by adding a divide factor to change the clock from whatever this G clock is. So 
By default, it'll be at the same frequency the G clock is, but you can adjust that. So how would I adjust it? Well, I read through it and I got an understanding of how it worked and then I went to the register summary and there I can I read from reading this, I was able to see that the the register that controls the CPU clock or the divide factor of the CPU clock is the CPU select register. So CPU SEL. It's only an 8-bit register. Now a lot of the, the registers in the SAM chips are 32-bit. Okay, so armed with this knowledge, what do I do next? Okay, here I am at the data structures page and the link on my presentation, but I'll also put the link in the description of the video takes me here. Now, if you don't use that link, it's actually kind of hard to get here. And like I said, Arduino only uses a certain chunk of the ASF, the low level data structures. If you go into here, these are function calls that Arduino does not use. Now, could you use these in an Arduino sketch? I don't know, there might be a way to, there probably is a way to import those libraries. I, I have not gone through that yet. So I'm using the data structures that the IDE actually calls in. So you might see these and it looks like a mess. And I should mention, as I go through here, this may sound a little confusing, but the idea is once you do it a couple times, it starts to make sense. So for instance, whenever you see like the two letter, the three letter abbreviation, that is actually one of the register groups. So the ADC hardware register. So all the registers that have to do with, with the analog to digital converter. So here is the, the group, but here's the individual registers. So let me show an example. So let me go down all the way to power management. And here it is, power management registers, PM. And if you notice, if I go down, here is CPU select. So I'm gonna click on PM and power management is actually a structure. So if you're familiar with programming structures, and then it has what's called unions, and each one of these unions represents one of the registers. So notice, here is CPU select, and it gives a sh short description. If I click on this, uh, what am I trying to do? Here it is, CPU select. This is actually the union that makes up CPU select. So for instance, we're gonna be calling the register. You can also call bits, which I believe returns whatever the register state is. So I'm gonna go back. Once again, this may look a little confusing what's going on here, but just it'll come together right at the end. So there's the register I'm interested. Uh, it's in this structure that's called PM. If I go here, I can actually get the macros that actually represent the individual bits or individual, yeah, individual bits of the register that allow me to set the different functionalities. So instead of accessing the registers with hex values or binary values, I can use these macros. And so for instance, if I go down to the, uh, bear with me, CPU select, these are the macros I can use to change the settings. So for instance, the main thing you're gonna change there is the CPU divide factor. So by using this and entering a value here, I can divide the CPU down. And then these other ones, for instance, divide by one, divide by 128, divide by 16, these are actually macros I can then feed into this argument to do my divide by factor. So are you confused yet? All right, here's where it should come together. So let's take a look at the example program. So this is just meant to be a simple program, but I wanna show the changing of the CPU clock speed. So what I'm gonna do is cycle on and off a digital pin, high and low, and the speed of cycling it on or off will change when I change the clock speed. So for instance, in my setup code, I actually set the clock speed. Now I'm just setting it to a divide by factor of one, but here's where all the things I was showing in the ASF come together. So I'm calling the, the PM or the power management data structure, the structure. Then I wanna call inside that structure, CPU select. And then inside CPU select, I wanna select the register because that's what I wanna do. I wanna set the register. So I do dot reg. Then I do equal, and then that's when I'm gonna use one of the macros. I'm gonna use the PM CPU select CPU divide by macro, 
and I'm going to enter my divide by factor. Here it's 1, so it doesn't change anything. I then turn my PID mode to output for digital pin 3. Here's my main loop, and what I'm doing is I'm just setting up a toggle to go on and off to set this digital pin on and off. But then every six or so cycles, I switch the clock speed. So that's what's happening in here. So in this if statement, there's a divide by four or divide by one. And you can see that same statement above here. I call PM, I call my uh, register, I say that I wanna you know, set the register, and then I call the, you know, the divide macro, and then I set my divide factor. Now, notice in comments I, I put in this, because I could also enter this macro for a divide by four, but I don't care. I'm, I'm just gonna use you know, a, a variable here. So this variable is gonna toggle it back and forth. Now, this is just a simple example. You know, we went from the, the data sheet to the ASF, and then we went from the ASF to implement it in code. Now, if you've ever seen my, um, SAMD 21 pulse width modulation video or my DAC video, I have mu much more comprehensive examples there of using the a ASF framework to manipulate the registers. So the idea here is this is just a simple one to kind of show you all the steps, but typically it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna have to put some effort into this. You have to read the data sheet. There's gonna be some trial and error. You may have to go onto a forum or whatever, but this is, this is the process I use to do that. Okay, let's see this. Now that we've talked about this example, let's see this example in action so you know that it worked. Okay, here is my uh, setup. You can see I have the MKR1000 or the Maker1000 board from Arduino, which I do sell at my forcetronics.com website if you need one. So I have a scope hooked up to ground and digital pin three. And there's an Arduino Zero. It also works with that because it has the SAMD21 chip. Let me st stop it here. So here's my scope and I'm connected to D3. And you can see, you see a bunch of different, you know, waveforms, but you can see that they're different sizes. That's why they're changing. And that's because we're cycling the clock speed. now. I think I stop it here and I stop it again. Let me pause the video. So here what you're seeing is a cycle with a divide by four. That's these longer pulses, longer in time. And then here's the divide by one. So you can see the actual clock execution slows down and speeds up. So that's what we're trying to show and that's what we were trying to do in our example. Now one thing to note so each clock cycle is either an up or a down. So notice we did, well, we did about six. So one, two, three, four, five, and there's probably six over here. So if you notice, you could probably take more than four of these and fit them in here. But you might say, well, wait, it's four times slower, four times faster, so these should be proportional. But the reason they're not, and I'm just put it, putting this out in case you know we have some astute watchers, uh, the reason it's not is because there is an if-else statement and you know the counter gets incremented. So there is clocks, there is stuff going on in the CPU besides just putting these up or down. So the idea here is those other actions are also four times faster or four times slower. So that's why these are not gonna be exactly proportional. Anyway, just wanted to give that description. All right, that is it for this video, accessing or programming the registers on the SAM chips. If you have anything to add, uh, build on, or hints, or comments, or suggestions related to this topic, please share them in the comments, because I think any guidance you can give me or the other listeners would be uh, helpful. All right, thanks for watching.